And happy Oceans Day. Welcome to another Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants uh, hangout. Today's all about celebrating oceans and bringing some of the world's leading scientists, explorers, and conservationists into the classroom um, to share the wonders of the oceans and why we need to protect them. My name is Travis Steffens. I'm with Planet Madagascar. I'll be your host today. Uh, I'm very excited to introduce Amanda Cotton. Um, she's a professional Nikon photographer specializing in underwater imagery. As an avid scuba diver and ocean enthusiast, Amanda's goal is to help the general public embrace the beauty of below the waves in hopes that the awareness comes, uh, with awareness comes concern. The conservation and preservation of this ecosystem is the highest priority to Amanda. While she enjoys owning and operating a conservation-minded design media company called A Cotton Photo, Creative Works. Amanda takes great pride in working with like-minded organizations that generally care about the planet and its inhabitants, both above and below the waves. Amanda is honored to be a member of the uh, uh, national member of the Explorers Club, a member of the Ocean Artist Society, a Nikon, uh, a Nikon Professional Services um, member, and a Professional Photographer of America. And Amanda was recently inducted into the Women Divers Hall of Fame. So thanks, Amanda. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we look forward to hearing your, your talk today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this amazing event. It's exciting to be able to share my experiences with so many kids across the world. It's wonderful. And before I forget, we are um, should be joined by Mrs. Uh, Searson's grade three fours and Miss, uh, Mrs. Shinai Men's grade two three class from Douglas, Ontario. Mrs. Martin's and Mrs. Paquette's kindergartens from Brampton, Ontario. Mrs. Brown's kindergartens from Brampton, Ontario. Mrs. Carlton's grade twos from Sterling, Virginia. And Mrs. Hanlon's grade threes from Freehold, New Jersey. And I think you're hailing all the way down from Florida. So we're, we're across the eastern half of this continent. Yes, perfect. <laughs> So um, what I'd just like to talk about with all the kids is I'm, I'm going to share some pictures uh, of my job and what I do out in the world um, and kind of talk about our oceans and you know what I get to experience and some things that the oceans are going through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screen share. And I'm going to show you guys some pictures. Can you see that now? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, perfect. So first off, happy World Oceans Day. Um, I'd like to think that every day is an ocean day but in celebration of our oceans. But it's nice that we have one day in particular where kind of the whole world comes together and wants to celebrate and bring awareness to the oceans. So I work as an underwater photographer. And what that means is I get to go around the planet and shoot all kinds of very cool things in the ocean. My favorite things to shoot underwater are big animals. And so I'm going to show you guys a lot of different pictures of the animals that I get to shoot. So this is me taking a picture of the largest fish in the ocean, and it's a whale shark. Um, and sharks are very special to me, near and dear. And I'm going to show you some more pictures of sharks soon. Um, but these guys are absolutely beautiful and very big and are gentle giants. They actually eat little tiny things in the ocean, small fish and plankton and krill. So they're, they don't pose any harm to us. They're not dangerous to, to us in any way. Um, and they're, they're really magical to be in the water with. And I also like shooting things that most people think are kind of weird looking or unusual or different or maybe even might, somebody might call ugly. But I don't think they're ugly. I think, they're, I think they have a story that needs to be told. And I really enjoy trying to show a different side to these animals that are unique and um, different. And so this is a mola mola and a lot of people kind of think of this fish as ugly, but this is this is a fish that I have been, I guess you could say, obsessed with since I was very little when I saw one in an aquarium. And uh, this is a special moment for me, this picture, because at, when I, this picture was taken, this was one of the first mola molas I ever encountered when I was actually in the oceans. And I also like taking pictures of animals that people are maybe scared of or have ideas that they're maybe dangerous or um, could be, uh, 
you know, construed as maybe aggressive or mean. And I, I like to show those animals in a, in a different light too. So a lot of times sharks and alligators and crocodiles, people are very scared of them, but all of them need our help. And I think uh, I really enjoy this, the side of my job where I'm able to show these animals in a different light. And so we've been diving with crocodiles in Mexico for a couple of years now. And um, I really enjoy my time in the water with them. And as you can see, in the right situation with the right safety protocols in place, we're able to get very close to them and be able to take pictures of them underwater. So this is me with an American crocodile in Mexico. Now, like I said, our oceans are filled with all kinds of really wonderful, cool, interesting animals. And I'm gonna show you a, different, a whole bunch of different kinds of animals. The first one's being beautiful animals. Now, this is a, a manta ray uh, in Mexico. And manta rays are found all over the world and they're closely related to sharks. Um, all rays and, and sharks are in the same um, family. So um, when you're in the water with a manta ray, it's, it's, it's a very special feeling. And there's all different kinds of manta rays. And um, I really like showing them and, and sharing them and um, experiencing uh, the, the closeness that you get with the manta ray or any other animal in the water. Um, and, you know, basically falling in love with that animal when you take its picture and being able to share those pictures with the world because not everybody gets to have the experiences that I have. Um, I, I want the world to fall in love with the animals the way that I'm in love with them. And so this is another manta ray um, in a completely different part of the world, in a, in a completely different ocean. Um, this is off of Hawaii. And this is a very special night dive that you can do where the manta rays will actually come in because they're attracted by the lights because the light bring in little krill and little um, animals that the manta rays will actually feed on. So you can get 20, 30 manta rays swimming around you at night in this very shallow water because this dive site's a shallow um, area, probably maybe about 30 feet deep, so it's not very deep, but you have all the divers around you and you have the manta rays that are coming in around you too. And it's a very special experience to have and one that we have because these manta rays are here. And um, manta rays in some areas of the world are um, in trouble because they're being fished out and, um, and their numbers are, are going down. So it's important for us to try to put into place protection so that these manta rays stay in our oceans and so that we're able to have these type of dives and encounters um, for decades to come. And I don't just shoot animals when I'm in the water. I also, uh, for my work, I also get a lot of jobs where I'm shooting people. And so this is from a project that I worked on a few years ago with a friend of mine. And she had a beautiful mermaid uh, uh, wetsuit. And so we filmed her in the water, um, swimming around, and just showing a connection between a person or human beings and the ocean, because we're very much connected to the oceans. Um, humans aren't naturally in our oceans but we have a lot of connections to the oceans and um, many of us, probably a lot of you, feel very strongly um, for the oceans and wanna be in the oceans. And just being in water is something that makes you feel good. And so um, showing a connection between people and the oceans is another way to highlight the importance of the oceans. So again, I love shooting big animals. It really is where my heart is at. And these are humpback whales. And I've dived with humpback whales in a few different places around the world. And because they're mammals like us, um, I believe that we have a stronger connection to them. We, there's a, there, we feel certain things um, with a mammal, a marine mammal, 
um, that maybe we don't necessarily connect to and feel with fish, you know. Um, they have a lot of the same characteristics that we do. They stay together in tight family, uh, uh, tight families, um, dolphins and whales and all different marine mammals, um, sea lions, seals. Um, mothers typically care for their young for long periods of time. And here, this is a mother humpback with her calf, who is closest to my camera, so it looks a little bit bigger, um, and an escort. And they're all traveling together, and you can, you can feel the bond, you can feel the connection between them. And this, again, is another whale shark. And I really like to try to show a connection, not only between humans and the oceans, but humans and the animals that we find in the oceans. Because I feel that if we show this kind of imagery to people, that it helps, it helps people that maybe don't have the connection um, or the ability to get in the water like, like I do or like the people that work in my industry. Um, it shows, it, it helps them fall in love with these animals the way that we've fallen in love with these animals. Um, so showing that connection between human and and ocean animal is, I think, vital to getting people to fall in love with the oceans. And when people fall in love with things, they want to protect them and help them. And so that's critical for us right now um, because our oceans are in a lot of trouble. And a lot of the animals that are in the oceans are in a lot of trouble. Um, and if you look closely at this picture, you'll see a line uh, hanging out from the base of the dorsal fin, which is at the very top of the whale shark. And you'll see a, a, a string or a line and something floating at the surface. And that's a tag. And scientists have tagged this animal so that they can track its movements and do research and find out where this whale shark is moving to and get a whole bunch of vital information on this animal so that they can try to, in turn, protect it and um, protect the areas that it's going to and learn more about it. Because the more that we understand about these animals, the better we are at being able to protect them and have them around in the future. Now this is a manatee. And I live in Florida, so manatees we see here all the time. Um, we have them all over the place and they come into the freshwater areas um, of our state during the winter months because it's cold. And this is an animal that has been on the endangered species list for several for a long time. And they're actually the numbers are increasing again, although the last couple of years we've had some really harsh winters and the we've lost a lot of manatees. But um, here in the last year they're saying that the numbers are increasing again and there's actually talk of taking them off the endangered species list. Um, and there's a little bit of controversy with that, but it's nice to see the animals in the oceans that are being protected and the potential for that protection to help them and help the numbers come back. And this is another endangered species animal. This is a Hawaiian monk seal. And the numbers on its back are to be able to identify it when it's out in the ocean because the numbers are so dramatically low of this particular species, they watch every single individual very closely and um, make sure that they're, they're being treated properly and that they can watch what they're doing and, and how their progress is going as they go about their daily lives. Now, this kind of has a sad ending because this animal, because of human interaction, had to be relocated from where it was born and where it was living to another island in the Hawaiian Islands because people were interacting with it too much and it was coming up and it was actually biting people. And so to protect this animal and to protect the people in the area, um, we, they had to move the animal, which is sad because it wasn't able to stay where it originally was living. So we need to be mindful of that when we're going in the ocean and when we're interacting with animals that our actions have implications or an effect on the animals that are in the water with us. And this is the same monk seal. He's very, very cute. Um, 
but he got himself in a lot of trouble by actually biting some swimmers. So um, if you ever do, if you ever are in Hawaii for whatever reason and you do come across a Hawaiian monk seal, uh, it's very important that you do not harass it, that you get out of the water immediately uh, and that you leave it alone because they will follow you back. We were, we were working our way to get out of, the, out of the bay when he came up and started playing with us and um, we were trying to get out of the water and he followed us until we got out of the water. So even if an animal is trying to interact with you, sometimes it's not the best for the animal. So um, keep that in mind. Now our oceans are filled with beautiful animals. Our oceans are also filled with some very mysterious and unusual animals. Uh, and so these are sailfish and they're found in Mexico and they come in in huge numbers uh, to feed on bait balls. And they're fascinating because they're super fast in the water and the sail, the fin that's on the back of their body, they can actually move it up and down and control it so that they can actually communicate with each other and be able to corral these, these bait balls that you see here um, and be able to feed on the fish. So they use all the different parts of their body to be able to, to work with each other so that they can all feed. It's called predation. And the colors of their body actually change too. And I'm not sure if that's a sign of commun if they're communicating with each other that way or what's going on, um, but it's a fascinating thing to watch and a really beautiful thing to take pictures of. And their long bills, they don't actually impale the fish with those. They'll actually hit the fish on the side uh, and stun the fish. And when the fish is stunned, that's when they eat it. So this is, this is a video I'm going to quickly show you of the sailfish in action. And you'll see just how fast these fish really are. In the same area where we dive with these sailfish, there's also a big aggregation of bull sharks uh, during a certain time of the year. And bull sharks are uh, a very misunderstood animal, but a very beautiful animal to dive with. And in the same area of Mexico, uh, there are cenotes, which are under, underwater caves. Beautiful, beautiful areas. They're a mix of salt water and fresh water. And in some of them, they have crocodiles. And so this is one of the crocodiles, a very small little crocodile that lives in the area. And as you can see, he's more scared of me than I should be of him. Now another mysterious animal of the deep is the Humboldt squid. And Humboldt squid are large. They're about the size when they're full grown of a, of a grown man, so about six feet long. And each one of their suckers on their arms and tentacles has a little hook on it. And so there's, there's lots of stories about Humboldt squid and how they're, they're very dangerous and how they're very scary. And I wanted to show them in the pictures that I took um, of how beautiful they are because they really are unique and beautiful. And we were able to get in the water with them and not have any type of aggression or issues. And I wanted to share that side of them with uh, the people that saw my pictures. And in that same mindset, our oceans are filled with many misunderstood animals. Probably the most misunderstood animal of them all is the shark. A lot of people are very scared of sharks. 
I have been madly in love with sharks since I was a little, little girl, about four years old, uh, when I saw them on TV. And I've never been scared of them. And I was always fascinated. I always wanted to, to see them and to swim with them when I was a little girl. And I was very lucky uh, when I grew up that I was able to have a job that, I, that I'm able to do that. And I really do focus on sharks in my photography. And I want to show sharks in a completely different light than what we mostly see in the media. Um, because in, in movies, especially there's a, a new movie that just came out that looks, makes sharks look very scary. Um, and it usually in magazines and on television, we usually see sharks as being something that's trying to eat you and something that's very scary and we should be afraid of. And it's actually reversed. Sharks are in a lot of trouble right now in our oceans. And um, on top of that, you can very safely be in the water with, with a shark and swim with them and experience them and encounter them um, and not have any type of aggression or any problems with them. Uh, there, there are certain rules that you need to abide by and, and you can very safely dive with with and swim with sharks and so I wanted people to see sharks the way that I saw them and so with all of my imagery I really try to show them as being the beautiful magnificent animals that they are um, and they're in a lot of trouble like I said they shark some of the species of sharks in our oceans um, their populations are going way down and so we need to be mindful of that uh, because whether we like sharks or not, they're vital to our oceans and they're very important. And so I wanted to show sharks the way that I see them um, in hopes that people would protect protect them and fall in love with them the way that I'm in love with them and the way oh that my gosh. Did you see something? Yeah. Oh. so many people are in love with them in hopes that we'll be able to protect those species that are having a lot of trouble in our oceans right now alongside our oceans themselves. Like I said, they're in a lot of trouble. Um, but as you can see from these pictures, we're able to interact and encounter these animals um, very safely. The biggest shark in the ocean is the whale shark, like that picture I just showed you. And I'm going to show you some video of whale sharks in Mexico that we get to dive with every summer. We're actually going in a few weeks to go dive with these guys again. And this is the biggest shark in the ocean, and it will not hurt you. The, their filter feeders, as you can see, they're opening their mouths and closing them, and they're filtering the food, little fish eggs, out of the water. And we go down, and I take divers and swimmers and kids, um, and we go dive with these animals, and it's a really beautiful experience. And people come out of it changed. They they want to help protect the oceans, and they want to they want to get out in the ocean as much as possible. And these are manta rays, like the pictures from earlier, and we do encounter them down in the same area as the whale sharks because they feed on the same food that the whale sharks feed on. They're filter feeders too. Now these are manta rays. They're, they're similar to stingrays, but a little different. And you can see they have the long tails too. They're not going to hurt you. Um, I, I do get that question sometimes, would it, would it try to barb you? Um, a manta ray won't hurt you. Uh, it's, you have to be careful because their, their wings, you could say, are strong. So if they hit you, that could potentially hurt. Just like if you got hit by a whale shark tail, like just came by the, the camera, that could hurt. But they're not going to try to bite you or sting you. Be 
but you can see they're very fast. They're hard to keep up with. And this is the whale shark feeding. See how it's sucking all the eggs into its mouth and it's filtering all the eggs and filtering all the water out of its gills. And that's how they feed. And the little fish under its fin, that's a remora. And the remora is they hang out on the whale sharks um, and other big fish, sharks, things like that, um, to pick up the scraps that, that the larger animals leave behind. So another very misunderstood animal is basically the entire crocodilian family. And uh, these are American crocodiles that we dive with in Mexico. And we've been coming down to this part of Mexico called Banco Chinchero for about three or four years now. And I take other divers, other underwater photographers out to take pictures, to actually get in the water with these animals and take pictures of them. And we do it under a very particular set of rules um, because we need to make sure that we stay safe and that we keep the animals safe too because we don't want, any, we don't want a person or we don't want any of the animals to get hurt. So we have safety protocols in place and we have safety divers in place and very strict rules and regulations in place. And by doing that, we're able to get very close to these crocodiles in the water and take pictures of them. And it's been a wonderful experience and I've fallen very much in love with these crocodiles, almost as much in love with them as I am with sharks. And I really want people to see these animals in a different light than, than what they're portrayed. Now, they are wild animals, so we need to be aware of that and um, not get complacent or let our guards down or make bad decisions um, when we get in the water. We need to make sure that we're, we're taking everything seriously and we're doing everything in the safest possible manner. Um, but we need to look at these animals and their habitat, their, their surroundings, and try to protect them and try to can about them. Because, again, this is another species that has the potential to be in a lot of trouble because our oceans are in trouble. So we, we need your help. We need everybody's help in protecting the oceans. It's very important, whether you live right next to the ocean and you are in it all the time, or like I am with my work, or you live very far away from the ocean. Um, we have a responsibility towards the oceans because the oceans impact us and um, play a really important role in all of our lives. And so for me, as an underwater photographer, I need to be very careful about the types of pictures I put out. Now, like I said, I love sharks. Um, and this picture in particular is of an oceanic white tip. And I show this picture because I will never publish this picture anywhere. Um, I will never put it out anywhere. I will never sell this picture. I use this picture as an educational tool because this shark only did this open mouth in my camera behavior after working for hours to try to get it to do it because it wouldn't naturally do it. And I wanted to get this picture so that I could show people that this is the kind of pictures that are typically put out on in media about the scary open mouth shark. And that's not how this animal normally is. I, we've spent a long time, six, seven years, out diving with this animal at this particular spot, um, this particular shark. And it's never had this behavior with any of us. And it, we have to be very careful about the kinds of images that we put out so that people that don't see these animals as much as we do understand what is a natural behavior of these animals and what is a fake behavior of these animals or what is an instigated behavior of these animals. And this is very much a, a behavior that was not normal. And so when you see a picture like this of a shark or any animal out there, I want everyone to stop and think um, and, and try to think about if this is really how this animal is, um, try to learn more about these animals, 
and maybe kind of take everything, you know, how they say with a grain of salt because maybe it's not necessarily true. Um, and we also have a responsibility to the animals. Now, if you go on vacation with your families or if you're on a diving trip or if you're out in the wild and you see a wild animal, understand that your actions may potentially impact the animals that are out there. So we need to be aware of that and we need to try to be able to help the animals too. And we can do that in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, if we go on a trip, we can help uh, the, the local communities. Um, we can donate time to them. We can, we can help with their campaigns if they have something that they're trying to protect the animals or create a marine park um, or do something to protect their oceans around where they're at. Um, we can help with that, so assist with that. And make sure when you and your families are going out that the, the people that you're going out with are that care about the animals and so that we're interacting with responsible companies that are in these different areas. Um, and just supporting any type of, of local um, work to protect the oceans, you know, writing letters or drawing pictures and sending them to people that are trying to protect the oceans. Um, that can help, any type of support. It doesn't matter if you're five years old or you're 55 years old. There's something that you as an individual can do to help the oceans. Uh, it can be a little tiny thing or it can be a big giant thing. It doesn't have to it doesn't have to be a big giant thing. Little things make a huge difference too. And being respectful of the animals. If you see somebody taunting or teasing an animal, you know, tell them to stop or don't do it yourself. Um, there's so many different things that you can do to help our oceans. And just getting the message out there. Now that you've seen this, now that you know about World Oceans Day and what everything that you're learning today and from everybody else, um, the, everybody has a message and we're trying to, and that message is our oceans need help and we need to get involved. So get involved, talk to your family, talk to your friends, volunteer, write letters, do just be their voice, be the voice of the oceans. So I have a very, a, a quick little project that I want to talk to you guys about and this shows you that kids really can make a difference. So I have a program called Children and Sharks and we take kids out to go diving with sharks and we film their whole experience and they get to encounter these sharks. This is a 14 year old girl who went out diving with blue sharks in off of New York and we film the whole thing and she goes back to her school and she shares with her friends the encounters that she had with those sharks and she's helping the oceans and the sharks that way and this is a little girl, six year old little girl who did the same. Now she went out and she dived well, went swimming, snorkeling with whale sharks in Mexico. You see her here in the water with the whale sharks. And she did the same thing. And she went back to her school and she shared her story. And she's working as an ocean advocate now too. So it doesn't matter if you're young or old, you can make a difference. I'm going to change back to screen sharing off again. Let's see if I can do this. You can make a huge difference. Let's see in protecting the oceans. Wonderful. Thanks, oh, Amanda. That was interesting. Um, we do um, have a couple of classes that have uh, joined us. Uh, the cameras are on their mic. Um, so okay. I'll so you um, uh, go to Mrs. Hammond. Mrs. Hammond. And free hold the people in the chat. You can hear us. You can hear us. Hi, can you Hi. hear me? How are you? Sorry about the technical uh, difficulties, but uh, I'm okay. here. Well, right now, I think we had some problems on our end, but we have a couple friends that have questions. Great, that wonderful. Have... All right, Jar, you have to. You just want to come right here. You'll see yourself. Make sure you're nice and loud. Are you scared to get close to sharks? Well, no. I have actually never been scared to get close to sharks. I, I, I always thought they were beautiful. Um, you know, it's funny is when you're on the boat and you're looking in the water, the sharks under in the water, that's a little bit scary. But when as soon as you jump in the water, then they just become beautiful and you actually want them to come closer because they're very scared of you. 
So they, they typically stay far away from you, and you're, you're wanting them to come closer so that you can get pictures of them. You know what? You know Nemo? You know the little anemone fish, Nemo? I've been bitten more times by a Nemo fish than by sharks. So, because they're very territorial, and they're little guys like this, right? So they'll come up and they'll bite you. They're, they're, they don't, they have no fear. So I'm actually more scared of little Nemo fish than I am of sharks. Very interesting. All right, next. Go ahead, Alexis. Have you ever gotten hurt for, by an animal in the ocean? Uh, well, the little Nemo fish. <laughs> They'll come up, so you can have you can have gloves on, you can have a mask on, you can have a hood on, you can have a wetsuit. And little Nemo fish, if you get too close to their to their anemone, um, they're very protective and very territorial. So they'll actually come up and they'll find like the little piece of skin that's not covered and bite you on on the skin. Or if you're not wearing gloves, they'll bite you on your fingers. But but that's about it. I've been stung by jellyfish a couple times out swimming in the ocean, but not not anything bad. What type of gear do you have to wear? Oh, that's a good, well, all these are good questions. So scuba diving, you have to wear a tank, um, and that has, that has gas in it that you can breathe. And so it allows you to go down and breathe underwater. You have to wear a wetsuit usually because it protects you from the cold of the water. And you have to wear a mask. Um, and you have to wear fins on your feet so you can kick through the water. Um, but, and you have to wear a BCD so that you can float in the water. Um, so there's a lot of gear that you have to wear. Some people are really, really good with holding their breath. There's amazing, it's called free diving. And you don't have to wear any tank, you just wear a wetsuit, and you have your camera, and you wear a mask, and your fins, and you just, you hold your breath, and you go underwater, and you can swim around, and on one breath, you're able to take beautiful pictures and have incredible experiences um, with doing it that way. And then you're not exhaling, you don't have all the bubbles coming out, and so, the fish and the animals tend to get closer to you when you do that. All right, awesome. And one last question, Mackenzie. When did you start doing this? Oh, so I started doing this probably um, about 16, 17 years ago. But I always loved the ocean. I always wanted to be in the ocean. I always was swimming in the ocean and going to the beach with my family. and. So I always, I always enjoyed it, but, but doing like scuba diving and taking pictures was, was about 16, 17 years ago. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's all of our questions for today. Wonderful. Th thanks, Mitt and Mrs. Hanlon's class. Um, we've, got, we've got one other class here. Hopefully they can hear us. Um, and so I'm going to switch mics over. Mr. Greenfield's class, can you hear me? Uh, Melissa? Yes. So I found the email on Lewis. Can you guys hear us? We've got uh, Amanda here if you have any questions. Yeah, lunch for one of your kids. Looks like no. Might not. <laughs> we'll give him another moment. But that was fantastic. Uh, those are great questions. And, um, and let me see, Miss, uh, maybe Miss Hanlon has another question while she's there. Did anybody else have any other questions for Amanda? Do they want to come up? Jordan, come on up. Come on up. How many oceans have you sw swam in? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I've swam in the Indian Ocean, the China Sea, the... Oh gosh, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, um, lots of different places. Um, that's a really good question. I, I would have to, I, I have a lot of different places. I've been to six of the seven continents. I still have to get to Antarctica to be able to swim down there. Um, but you know what the fascinating thing is too, is all of the oceans that you swim in, they're all very similar. So you see a lot of the same animals, and then you see a lot of endemic, which means animals that are just in that particular area. Um, 
in them too. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. This is Rebecca. Um, what's your favorite type of animal in the ocean? Ooh, I definitely have to say sharks. I love sharks. They're super, super beautiful, and there's a whole bunch of different kinds of sharks. Um, and my favorite shark is a thresher shark because it has a long tail and it, it moves like a ribbon. You know, like when you move a ribbon in the wind and it blows and it, it does that beautiful flapping? That's, that's what their tails do too. So I think a, a thresher shark is probably my favorite animal. And this is Katie. What made you want to go scuba diving and taking pictures of the animals? Oh, I think, I like your earrings too, by the way. Um, I think, I just always loved the ocean. I just always wanted to be swimming and be in the water. It's, it's a whole other world under there, and you get to be so much closer to the animals underwater than you do even just walking, like, in a park or something um, when we're on land. And it feels like you're kind of in a, a fairy tale land. And so it feels very magical under there. Um, so I, I don't really know what the draw was originally. When I was your guys' age, I just always wanted to be in the water. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. We, have, we actually have to go to music. But thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We um, had a little technology issue in the beginning, but I'm glad it sorted itself out and we were able to chat with you. Thank you. Me too. You guys have a, thank you for inviting us in, and thank have you. a wonderful World Oceans Day. Thank you. Can you say bye? Bye. 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 Thanks, Amanda. That was wonderful. That was a really inspirational, fantastic talk. Um, uh, your, your photos are amazing. And, uh, oh, and I, I really love how you uh, and how you portray the animals and and really are ambassadors for these animals when they when they need a, 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 a voice for conservation and for protection so thank you very much and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to spend uh, with us here at exploring by the cedar pants and and we um, we hope your next adventures go uh, as safe and soundly as your as your previous me too thank you so much and um, yes, thank you for having me, and I hope everybody has a wonderful World's Oceans Day. Great, thank you. Okay, take care. Bye.